In the ancient world of Mesopotamia, perhaps the brightest beacon was King Hammurabi of Babylon, who left a profound mark not only on the history of the Babylonian Empire, but also on the legal legacy of humanity. Known for his famous law code, the Code of Hammurabi, he not only unified and expanded the Babylonian kingdom, but also established a legal system considered one of the earliest steps in the development of law in human history. However, the study of Hammurabi is not just about exploring culture and law, but also a journey to understand life, society, and politics in ancient Mesopotamia. The civilization of Mesopotamia, often referred to as the Cradle of Human Civilization, or Mesopotamia, a term coined by the ancient Greeks for the region situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Since ancient times, Mesopotamia has been renowned as a fertile land, conducive to agricultural production. Its relatively flat and open terrain facilitated frequent incursions by external tribes into the territory. Therefore, Mesopotamian civilization is not the civilization of a single ethnic group, but rather a synthesis of various peoples, such as the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, Assyrians, and others. Key achievements encompass domains such as religion, writing, literature, art, natural sciences, astronomy, medicine, and more. It can be said that the most flourishing period in the history of Mesopotamia occurred during the reign of King Hammurabi, who ruled the Babylonian kingdom from the early 19th century BCE to the 16th century BCE. Hammurabi, often regarded as the first king of the Babylonian Empire, ascended to the throne inherited from his father, Sin Muballit, around 1792 BCE. While the Babylonian Empire under Hammurabi's rule thrived and became a major power in the Mesopotamian region, the question was not whether it developed, but whether it could endure. Hammurabi is commonly remembered as a lawmaker, known for enacting the famous legal code called the Code of Hammurabi. However, in later historical documents, many scholars acknowledge that Hammurabi was not only a legislator, but also a wise monarch, a skilled military strategist, diplomat, administrator, and a proficient builder. He shaped Babylon into a significant force in the region, laying the groundwork for political, economic, and cultural development not only within Mesopotamia, but also on a global scale. From its humble beginnings as a small village on the banks of the Euphrates River, Babylon steadily developed over two centuries until the emergence of Hammurabi. In his first year on the throne, Babylon faced encirclement by several kingdoms, three of which posed the greatest threats. To the south, as Babylon's long-standing rival, was the kingdom of Larsa, ruled by Rim Sin, whom Hammurabi's father, Sin Mubalat had fought at least twice, while Larsa's control over the Tigris River Valley undoubtedly provided more experience. At that time, to the west, Eshnunna was a more significant threat located in the upper Tigris River region. Another great king of the northwest was Shamshi Adad. Though these territories were not Babylon's hereditary adversaries, they all sought to expand their territories. Hammurabi knew that conflict was unavoidable, but it wasn't that he lacked ambition for his own goals. Instead, he had a wise idea to strengthen his house before knocking on the doors of neighboring houses. In the first five years of Hammurabi's reign, it seems that most of his time was spent on financial matters and rebuilding temples and canals. He built bridges across the Euphrates River so that his city could expand and focus on agriculture by constructing granaries and irrigation channels. This effort paid off handsomely as within a few decades, Hammurabi transformed Babylon from a small city-state into one of the most influential nations in its region. In 1787 BCE, around the sixth or seventh year of Hammurabi's reign, he initiated a significant military campaign against the kingdom of Larsa, capturing two major cities, Uruk and Asin. These cities had previously been allies of Hammurabi's father in the struggle against Rim Sin. However, archival records discovered in both Uruk and Isin indicate that this victory was not permanent, 
as Rim Sin reoccupied both cities just a few years later. Tensions escalated when, in the mid-1760s BCE, Hammurabi faced off against the Kingdom of Eshnunna in northern Mesopotamia, and later, Alam's leader, Sukalma. Hammurabi formed an alliance with King Zimri Lim of Mari and Sukalma to defeat Eshnunna, a goal they achieved. However, Sukalma had no intention of withdrawing, and in the lush lands of Mesopotamia, Hammurabi quickly betrayed the alliance and incorporated Sukalma's territory into Babylon while Sukalma's forces were expelled from Mesopotamia. Hammurabi then turned his army southward to conquer and annex the kingdom of Larsa. He justified this action by claiming that Rimsin had not responded when he needed support in the war against Eshnunna and Alam. However, when Hammurabi's ally Zimrilim refused to send troops to support the campaign, Hammurabi grew angry. After defeating Larsa and ending Rimsin's reign, he broke the alliance, assimilating all of Zimrilim's territories into Babylon. This included major cities like Mari, Asher, and Nineveh in northern Mesopotamia. Thus, Hammurabi seized control of the most powerful state in the Middle East. Although all these wars and conquests lasted for only four years out of Hammurabi's more than 40-year reign, the majority of his time was devoted to building and developing the city of Babylon. These efforts contributed to making Babylon one of the most important cultural, political, and economic centers in ancient history. In the 33rd year of his reign, Hammurabi returned to Babylon after a series of campaigns that saw him conquer much of Mesopotamia, becoming the most powerful ruler in the region. During times not occupied by warfare, Hammurabi devoted himself to various construction projects, but most notably, to the drafting and enactment of the famous Code of Hammurabi, consisting of 282 laws, which deeply influenced the lives of the people not only during his reign but also in the subsequent era. The Code of Hammurabi is preserved in a solemn setting at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France today. Engraved on a basalt stele standing about eight feet tall, along with numerous other copies held in museums and significant buildings worldwide, from the headquarters of the United Nations to renowned sites in the United States. This code is considered quite severe in establishing a society of order and justice. For example, if a witness in a capital crime case cannot provide evidence for their testimony, they will be executed. If a thief is caught, they will be punished with death. If a builder constructs a house for someone, but their work does not meet standards and results in the death of the homeowner, the builder will be put to death. These regulations, though harsh, still reflect Hammurabi's views on fairness and order in society. Other provisions in this code are also quite familiar. For instance, if someone causes harm to another person, they will face similar retribution. If they injure someone's eye, they will be blinded. If they harm someone's bone, they will endure similar pain. If they knock out someone's tooth, their tooth will be knocked out as well. The Code of Hammurabi also stipulates the payment of wages for specific types of work and appoints many judges in Babylon and other major cities to ensure compliance with his laws. The goal of this code was not only to build a just society, but also to enhance the happiness of the people. At the very least, that's how Hammurabi wanted to be remembered. The Code of Hammurabi is one of the oldest ancient legal texts praised as the longest lasting in the world. However, this is not entirely accurate. The Sumerian laws of Urnamu are considered older, but Hammurabi's code is undoubtedly the most detailed, renowned, and well-preserved legal document from ancient times. While Urnamu only comprises five laws, Hammurabi's code contains 282 laws. The stele of Hammurabi on the basalt stone depicts him as a king laying the foundation for a just society where everyone must abide by the laws and order without distinction of class. Hammurabi passed away in 1750 BCE, and at that time, he was arguably the most powerful man in the world. However, after his death, the empire he built began to decline and eventually fell. What do you think about the golden age of the Babylonian Empire under the reign of King Hammurabi? If you were given the choice, would you want to be a citizen of Hammurabi's realm? 
Let me hear your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to continue the journey of exploring ancient history with us. Thank you for paying attention and listening.